this start unit is by design absolutely one of the the, the best so far out of those timing uh, a couple things has the uh, external strobe right here on the top uh, that we're always used to uh, flip it on the front has a great internal speaker high fidelity great sound quality coming out of that and then here on the back uh, all the standard plugs that you're used to with your start time five um, if we take a closer look here on the start time five uh, you're going to see here more of the Tushel plugs that we've talked about already okay we have a, a xlr plug here power and then our control surface here a full led uh, push button control system that uh, fully sealed watertight all that kind of stuff and allows you to set all the different settings that the start time five comes with uh, first thing here let's talk about is how to power on your start time five so what you got to do is you got to hold down your start i mean your power button until you see the green and red leds below it flashing back and forth once you see them flashing back and forth you can let it go and the unit will power on and start up this is a fail safe this is one of those things that's by design so that accidentally the start time doesn't get cut on um, if it's bouncing around in a box going to and from a meet or being put away or something like that. That way it makes sure that when it's on, you're ready to use it. And when you're not ready to use it and cut it off, it doesn't accidentally get turned on and the battery gets drained. Uh, right here, real quick, as we're going to show you, uh, the flash. The flash input right here, it's a female two-shell plug. Uh, this is, allows you to connect up to 10 flashes off of one unit. So if you have a 10 lane pool, you could chain 10 flashes to each lane, uh, or you could put just one up on a pole so that timers can see it easily, or you can run one to a lane where you might have a hearing impaired swimmer. Your next one is your speaker output. Once again, this is, has the ability to run up to 10 16 ohm speakers that you could put one under each lane. Uh, with that being said, you could also run a couple higher wattage speakers to just make sure that you have enough sound out there. Um, it, you can either run one in each lane or just a few to make sure you have sound out there. Uh, next, as we talked about our line output, our XLR line output, this allows for you to connect to your PA system and uh, maybe get a little louder presence to make sure that the crowd and stuff is getting quiet at the start. Or if you have a webcast or a TV there and they wanna take a real crisp, clean, sound of the starter at the beginning of a race to make sure that they're getting that uh, that audio for that webcast to make it the best it can be. You can take that right out of here. The next one is our start output. This is where we hook to our quantum timer or whatever timer that we are using. Uh, this is our output that sends the pulse to say the race has started at this exact moment and starts the timer. Uh, this is called a DIN connector. It's a three pin DIN connector. This is our charger. Uh, the unit can charge and operate at the same time. So we always say, when in doubt, always keep it plugged in and running. If you if you are gonna put it on a backstroke flagpole or a tripod next to the pool and you're not comfortable with running power that's close, completely fine as well and running it off battery power. But best practices always says, run it plugged in whenever possible. And then the last one is our, our microphone plug. Uh, our microphone plug there. Uh, it's a, once again, it's a different style Tushel connector um, and also works with the E-Gun. So to connect our start unit to our quantum timer, we're going to take a four pin Tushel, which is different than our seven pin Tushel for our harness. And we're going to connect it uh, to our start unit. It doesn't matter what order we do this in, but we do need to always look for that nub or that key as we talked about with the harness. We're going to plug it in and turn sideways here a little bit. We're going to plug it in and then only turn the collar, push it in nice and tight and then only turn the collar to tighten it into our unit. Same thing goes here on the back of our, uh, the back of our quantum timer. We're going to also put it in the same way uh, in our start one input, okay? That's, uh, remember that the start one is where we have the main start end of the pool, or if we're only running one, one starter, that's the one we're gonna put it in. Same thing, line up your key or your nub, push it in firmly, and then only spin the collar to lock it in. Next, we're gonna go ahead and hook up our microphone for our start unit. And our microphone is a little different than you're used to on any of the other start units that you might've used in the past, even the Omega ones. 
And this uh, plug you can see is 10 pins in it. So they have multiple keys on the inside ring here to fit on the, on the outside ring of the connector on your unit. So you wanna make sure you get those uh, lined up very gently. Spin your tushel until you feel it click in. Do not put a lot of pressure on there. We don't wanna damage the plug in any way. Then once we feel it click in, we're just gonna spin our collar and it'll lock in there nice and tight. And now we can see the speak button of our start unit has illuminated, letting us know that the, the cable is connected properly and we're ready to go. One thing about our start unit here is that we do have two-way communication between the starter and our timer. When the timer is in the race ready to go, you will see that the green light illuminates here on your microphone, allowing the starter to start the race. If the starter was not, if the, if the quantum was not ready, the green light would go away. So as you can see here, the green light, when the timer is ready, illuminates, allowing you to start the race.